Okay, now we have um, question 17 on page number 6 of questions from um, <coughs> February, March 2019, paper 2, variant 2. Um, we got here, the first question on this page, number 17, is about indices. Okay, so part A, it says, find the value of n when 5 to the power of n equals 1 over 125. Okay, now in all of these questions, when you have um, indices, oh, this is called exponential equation, what you'll notice is you'll be able to make the numbers on both sides of the equation with this, expressed with the same base. So this is 5 to the power of something. Now 125, you have to try and figure a way of expressing it as the same as 5 to the power of something. Okay, so if you're not sure, you should really know. It's not so such a difficult um, problem, but if you if you're familiar with your numbers, you should know, okay. But if you're not sure, you can say okay, five squared. Well, we should all know that's not one twenty-five. That's, that's twenty-five, and then you can say okay, let me try five cubed. And then you say okay, that's one hundred twenty-five. So we know that five cubed is one hundred twenty-five, okay. So I can now express this as 5 to the power of n equals 1 over, instead of 125, I can write it as 5 cubed. Now 5 cubed, 5 cubed can also be expressed, let me just tidy it up, can also be expressed as a, five, we want the numerator, the denominator to be the numerator. We want 5 on the numerator here, and we can put this 5 to the power of 3 as the numerator. But what has to happen for that to take place is that, the power has to become a negative power. Okay, now 5 to the power of minus 3 is the same as 1 over 5 to the power of 3. Okay, that's from the law that we learned of indices that a to the power of negative of a power is equal to 1 over a to the power of a positive of power. So this is just the vice versa of this. Okay, so when you have something to a negative power, it's basically 1 over that same thing to a positive power. It's basically reciprocal of that thing. Okay, so reciprocal. Okay, so now once you have an equation, two sides are equal, and they're both expressed with the same base. If those bases are equal, and the, both sides of these two equations are equal, that means the powers must be the same. So n must be equal to negative 3. Okay? All right, part b, here we have a, a another question about indices. This is not an equation, this sounds like an expression, we have to simplify it. So what we need to do first is we need to Remember that, the, as I just mentioned, the negative power means a reciprocal. So, like if you have a over b to the power of minus something, that will give you b over a to the positive of that same thing. All right? So, let me just, yeah, that's fine. Okay? So, this is basically, this is just the general rule that, okay, we learn. Now, we're going to apply that rule to this situation here. So the negative power will become positive, and this will be written as it's reciprocal. So we have m cubed over 64, and this will now be to the power of a third. Okay, the m cubed doesn't become negative because it's moving to the numerator because of this negative sign of outside the bracket. Okay, the power of the whole bracket is negative. That's why that's becoming the numerator. Okay, not because of this three or anything like that. So that these two, whatever they are, they just basically swap places. Okay, without any other change. All right, but this power outside, it changes to a positive power. Now, when I deal with um, powers and letters and numbers, I like to deal with the letters in a different way from the numbers, just to make life a bit easier for myself. So, I know with letters, for example, I'll just write the general rule over here. For, with letters, if I have a to the power of m raised to the power of n, that's like a to the power of m times n. Okay, that's a different m from this, is just a, this is the rule. But, okay, so a to the power of something to the power of something is equal to a to the power of the product of those two powers. So if I take the numerator, which is m cubed, so I take m to the power of 3, and I, and I raise that to the power of a third, okay, it's like that, that's the same as m to the power of 3 times a third. You multiply the powers, which gives you m. And the denominator, I like to think of that in terms of um, root. So I know I know that um, the nth root of a is a to the power of 1 over n. Okay, so that's, there's a power here of 1, that's why it's 
as one. So whatever number the root is, is the same as one over, okay, to the power of one over that number. Okay, so this is 64 to the power of a third. 64 to the power of a third. A third, sorry, let me just... 64 to the power of a third, which is the same as the cube root of 64. So that's the same as the cube root of 64. The cube root of 64. Now, 4 times 4 times 4 is 64. That gives you 4. So the answer is m over 4. 4 to m if you wish. m over 4, both the same thing. Okay, so that's question part B of question 17. Okay, so 17 completed. So as I said, the letters, I like to deal with them in terms of the laws of indices. And the numbers, I like, them, I like to deal with them in terms of roots and powers. Okay, that's how I prefer it. It makes life a bit easier. Now, number 18. A pipe is full of water. The cross-section of the pipe is a circle of radius 2.6 centimeters. Water flows through the pipe into a tank at a speed of 12 centimeters per second. Calculate the number of liters that flow into the tank in one house. So there's a few different things here. First of all, you've got a pipe. Okay. This pipe is full of water. Okay, so the, all of the pipe has got water in it. It's a cylindrical pipe because the cross section is a circle of radius 2.6. The radius is 2.6 centimeters. Now, what we're going to do is we're going to take a snapshot of this pipe of 12 centimeters. I'm just going to take 12 centimeters worth of pipe. Okay, it's saying, why does it take 12 centimeters? Because it says water flows through the pipe into a tank at a speed of 12 centimeters per second. So if I work out, okay, how much water is flowing through the pipe every second, which is going to be this, this water here, okay, how much water is flowing through the pipe every second, then I can, I mean, in terms of volume of water flowing through the pipe every second, I can then work out the number of liters, because liters is a volume, okay? It's no good us having the length of the water. We need the volume of the water. Okay, but we can use that length to find the volume. We need the volume of water flowing in one second. So this is like a, a one second snapshot of the pipe. Okay, that's just a one second snapshot of the pipe. Okay, so we're going to find, we know 12 centimeters in every second flows through this pipe. So we're going to find the volume of water. So we need to find the volume of the cylinder. Okay, we need to find the volume of the cylinder, which is 12 centimeters long with a radius of 2.6 centimeters. Okay, so the volume flowing through the pipe per second, in one second, is going to be, now the volume of the cylinder is given by pi r squared, which is the area of the cross section, which is a circle, times h, which is how long the pipe is, how high it is standing up. Okay, so you've got pi times 2.6 squared, times 12. That will tell you the volume flowing through the pipe every second. So you have pi times 2.6 squared times 12. Now that gives you 2,028 over 25 pi. So 2,028 pi over 25. Now I've lifted it in this exact form for a reason, okay, because I want to um, keep my accuracy in my answer to the end. All right, so that's the volume in one second. We need to find the volume flowing into one hour. Now, one hour, we know that one hour is equal to 60 minutes. Okay? And that's equal to 60 squared seconds. Right? One hour is 60 minutes and 60 minutes is 60 seconds, so one hour is equal to 60 squared seconds, okay? So we know that um, we want to find how much is flowing, or the lead, number of liters that flow in every, um, in every hour. Now this is in centimeters cubed. This is the number of centimeters cubed flowing in one hour, okay? If we multiply this, well, um, if we know that one liter, we also know that one liter, is 1,000 centimeters cubed, okay? 
and here we have a number of centimeters cubed we want to change that into liters okay so we want to change this into liters now if you change from centimeters cubed into liters okay you're going from smaller to bigger so you divide so we've got to divide this by a thousand okay but what i'm going to do is first i'm going to find the volume in centimeters cubed and then change it to liters at the end that will probably be easier so i know that in one second okay we have 2028 pi over 25 centimeters cubed flowing through the pipe and in one hour we have x centimeters cubed now one hour is the same as 60 squared seconds okay so one hour is the same as 60 squared seconds so i can say the number of liters flowing in one hour which is 60 squared seconds is 60 squared times 2028 pi over 25 okay and that's going to give you my answer in centimeters cubed so i have this answer times 60 squared Okay, so that gives me 292,032. 292,032. Yeah, that's pi, 32 pi, still in terms of pi. Okay, that's centimeters cubed. Okay, and now I want to change that into liters. So I have to say, okay, in liters I have to divide by 1000 why because um, we're going from smaller to bigger so we divide so you're going to take this and divide by 1000 and that gives you 917.44558 so and so on so you have 917 917 it's 917.4 continues on four four five or five whatever so we don't need that many so we need to in the end round to three I said because nothing else is mentioned so that's 917 liters okay so we found the volume of water flowing every second through the pipe and then we changed we found the volume of water flowing through the pipe every hour okay and then we changed our centimeters cubed to liters by dividing the answer by a thousand. Okay, so that's question number 18. Question number 19 is asking us to simplify this algebraic fraction. Now, to simplify this algebraic fraction, we have to factorize. Just like when we simplify a normal fraction, we try to cancel out factors in the numerator and denominator. We have to do the same thing here, but before we can do that, we have to take out the common factors. So in the numerator, the common factor here is b. You have b as your common factor, and you have a, so a, b times something gives me a, b, b times a gives me a, b, and b times something gives me minus b squared, well that's minus b. And the denominator, we can see it's a difference between two squares. Difference between two squares also always factorizes to one bracket with a plus, one with a minus, and the square root of each of the terms inside Bracket, so you have a plus b and a minus b. Doesn't matter if I write it the other way around, a minus b and a plus b, same thing. But what we notice now is that you have a common factor in the numerator and the denominator which we can cancel out. So we're left with b divided by a plus b. So there's our answer b over a plus b. And we have completed this page and we're going to go on to the next page in the next video.